Hey everybody, welcome back to Steve's Garage, and I'm Steve. Hey, I hope everybody's doing great today. I hope uh, all you people down in Florida there aren't suffering with the floods and all that. It, um, that Hurricane Debbie just rolled through and not too good down there. But anyway, I uh, wish you all the best if you're in that area and uh, the Carolinas too, all the way up. I guess it's not going to be good. And then it's heading for New England. We're up here in uh, Western Massachusetts and it's been raining here the past couple of days. And today it is, uh, it's about 68 or nine. It's, uh, it's cool. It's actually cold for August. We just went through a, like a one month long, uh, heat wave, 90 degrees and, um, you know, almost a hundred and some days. And it was miserable. So anyway, I want to catch you up. It's been a while. I want to catch you up on my car. Uh, last video, I was putting in a gas tank and a fuel gauge. And I want to show you where we got there. Today, we're going to put in, uh, replace the carpet. Because when this the fuel tank, this is a Model A 1929. The fuel tank is right here. All right. Comes down to about here. And these things held 10, 10 and a half gallons, somewhere in there. And um, the problem with this tank is that we had a leak right under the steering column. And um, uh, what Henry Ford did is he riveted a bracket on there, which had a clamp, which held the steering column to the steering wheel. And it's literally riveted to the gas tank. So, of course, you know, it's 95 years later. And... Uh, that thing gave way on me. I did try to repair it, but you know, the tank is, you know, now I'm welded up in here and uh, there's no removing this tank. So the bottom line is it was a cheesy repair at best because I just couldn't get, you know, I couldn't get 110% in there. And if you're fixing something that's leaking, you have to, you know, really get in there, grind good, get every little crease and corner. And it's just where it is. I just couldn't get under there. So, it held really well, but you know, it's, I can still smell fuel. I don't have anything physically a leak or anything. And you know, I put my hands on it and I can't feel anything, but um, it's definitely weeping fumes. And you know, with electrical and all that, I mean, everything's wired fine and all that, but if you have any type of a spark, I'm just I'm afraid of a problem. And uh, the last thing you want is, uh, you know, driving down the road on fire. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the bottom line is I put a new gas tank in the back of the car and uh, I've run my fuel lines up to the front. It's all set, ready to go, except before I put my seats back in and get this thing fired, I'm going to replace the carpet because the carpet had um, a spot on it where it did it drip. You know, I never saw a drip, but when you put your hands up, you could feel it and it probably dripped. You might have dripped like every few days or something. But after, you know, months and months of me having it running, it, uh, it stained the carpet, ruined the backside of it. And we'll show you that as we go here. So let me show you what we've got going, and uh, we'll go from there. So this is the new fuel tank that I put in, and there's the filler tube goes up to the, uh, uh, it's like a European style um, gas cap. And I uh, really love it. It uh, just looks cool and um, you know, functionality of it. It's made from billet aluminum and, and that's it right there. So it definitely is a, you know, an art piece too. And I couldn't be happier with it. Just really cool. Another cool piece added to the car. I did put in, I'll go around this side. I did put in my fuel gauge right here. And of course, that is the sending unit in the tank. Uh, the green wire is my power, the black wire is ground, which goes up and is grounded off the engine. But I'll show you, like right now, you can see it's on empty. Um, I'll put the power on and I'll turn the key. 
and I only have a couple gallons in it. And again, turn the key off, see it drop. So again, you know, from my experience, when you're putting stuff together, don't go 100%. You know, I'm not going to fill the tank with 10 gallons and then uh, fire on it. I'm just going to, you know, a couple gallons, make sure everything works, and move on from there, you know. So today we're going to take that carpet out. This is my new carpet over here, and I bought this at Home Depot. I'm not advertising for them, but I'm just telling you, this is uh, carpet is uh, actually ironically it's made by the company called Viking, and I you know I call this car the Viking. So I bought this, and it cost me forty eight dollars. So it was worth the fact that I had put this carpet in originally, and um, and why have see that stain? You can see it good there now. Oh, that black dirt or that dark, dark spot, that's from gasoline. So we're going to get rid of this thing and um, put new stuff in, and she's going to be pretty again. And a new fuel system, I couldn't be happy with that. I ran all my fuel lines, by the way, and uh, here's my new uh, gas fuel filter. And uh, there's nothing in it, as you can see. It's empty. So this is my on-off petcock there. So on, off, and then new fittings into the uh, carburetor. And this is the old system, which I will remove at some point. It still has some fuel in it. It's taped off. I cut it and taped it off. So, uh, so that's it. So I couldn't be more excited that uh, we're moving forward here. Let's um, take this carpet out. I'll have you work with me on it a little bit, and we'll go from there. All right? So let me get you reset up here, and uh, we'll get through it. So one thing I've got to do is take my other side panel off there. I'm zoom in on that. Look at that. So we were down to Cape Cod for a couple of weeks on vacation. It was uh, awesome, as usual, and the weather was good. Funny how the weather, it'll be raining here and sunny out there, because if you look at the map of Massachusetts, that big hook on the end of it is Cape Cod, and we were way out on the end there uh, enjoying ourselves. So these buttons here that I'm pointing to are a... Uh, Literally just a cap that goes on over the screw, which has a, a button, just like a you know, upholstery button. And these things pop right on to hide that. And that's a pretty cool effect. So I've got two buttons on there. Take those off. Take these off. There you have it. Side panels removed. Buttons gone. So while I was down on the Cape, I'm gonna zoom this back out again. We um, we have to cross the street to go to the beach right across the street, literally, from where we stay. And uh, I almost got run over by a 34 Ford. And uh, I was busy talking and not looking and shot a going to shoot across the street. And here comes this 34, beautiful 34 Ford. And, uh, you know, I stopped and he honked and all, in, all was well that ended well, but uh, scared the hell out of me. So I thought that was pretty ironic that I like old cars and, and here we are getting chased down by one. So I gotta get some pliers. This is all already loose. Another thing I wanna check, is I wanna put um, some type of a painted 
piece of metal to seal the edge of this carpet. If you can see it, it's, you know, it's just a rough look there. But let me get a piece of steel over here. As usual, we're always making videos on the fly here. So I'm kind of thinking as I go, bear with me on all that. Um, I'm going to cut some steel. And no, I didn't buy a new tripod yet, but I'm going to have to. So, it's on this side. I've got my cutter roller bender here. And uh, I'm going to grab a tape measure and cut two one inch pieces of steel. This gauge feels like it's like 18 gauge. I think we're 18 gauge here. Actually, I'm going to go one and a quarter. One and a quarter. One just seems a little too thin. And again, like everything kind of eyeball here. There's no blueprint for what we're doing. We're just making a car. We're making stuff as we fly, on the fly, as we fly. So let's get this piece in. Got it marked out, put my marks on the line. One. is I'm uh want to put a piece on here. See how this is this is a rough this is just rough carpet here. So what I want to do is put a piece in here and as you can see this is curved. I'm gonna have to use my shrinker and crimp this and get get it to curve. And the way a shrinker works, for those of you who don't know, is we have these, uh, it's a little piece of steel with teeth on it. They come down and they're open like this. And when they come down, they pull together as you push like that. And when they pull together, they're, pull, they're pulling the metal together. And when you pull one side of that metal together, you wind up getting your curved piece. So, again, I can't see if I got that in the camera, but if you shrink this edge here, it winds up curving that piece like that. So to get what I'm looking for in here, I'm going to have to shrink that and get it curved. But my biggest concern is 
I shut the door that this piece of steel I'll show you from the other side That, that piece of steel is going to be able to get underneath the doorway when the door shuts here. So, so right there, yes, we're good. And I'm going to put the, it's not showing on the outside, I'm going to put a little mark on there. So I know, if you can see that, that's a couple of inches, which is way more than I need. So if I know I'm good there, there, and so that works all the way down. So that's perfect. So I know that this piece of steel, the thickness of it on top of the carpet is going to be able to fit nicely and then when I curve that into place I will drill holes in it to take a sheet metal screw but you know I'll, I'll chamfer it in like a cone so that the head of that screw lies flush in there and then I can screw these in like maybe every six inches and that will be uh, it'll cover the carpet and make a finished edge and really make it pretty and I'll, I'll paint that like a um, maybe black or um, or maybe cranberry red to match the carpet. I don't know yet, but we'll come up with that. And that will finish it off. Give me a finished edge. And that's, you know, that's just another detail of building one of these custom-made cars. So that's a grand plan. I think that's a good idea. I think we're good to move forward with that. So let's get the camera reset up. Now we'll take this carpet out and uh, and go from there. I think it's time for a new tripod. This one when I started out on YouTube, I'm like, well, who knows where this is going to go? So I'm not going to go crazy buying crazy stuff. And uh, needless to say, 200 and some odd videos later, we are in need of a new tripod. Take off the foot pedal for the um, for the gas pedal and this is the choke that I want to cutting through that's out I actually made a mistake when I cut this carpet in because my there's a video way back of my um, making the pattern for this and I use like a, a hundred pieces of paper because you know to me it's easier to just keep on putting a bunch of small pieces of paper in and uh and tape them in place foot pedal for the brake and um it just goes fast you know making a pattern patterns are pain in the butt and uh, hey, the faster you can go, the better. So I just keep on throwing piles and piles of paper in. But when I was cutting it, I confused myself because one of the pieces of paper had a, um, a couple notches in it. And I cut that out, not knowing that I was doing the wrong thing. And um, needless to say, like everything, I need another pair of pliers. Get the, Starter button off. 
So what I did was I, I used double tape, double stick tape, and I taped in the um, a little patch. I'm like, well, if I ever replace this carpet someday, I probably jinx myself with that just there. So the starter button, which you can't see, I'm sure, is um, is screwed in. So what I'm doing is loosening up the screw. And trying to take it out. There we go. So there's the starter. That's your foot pedal. Pushes a switch on the uh, starter and uh, fires up the starter. So that is that. These and good there. It's never easy when you're cheesy. All right. Is that. See that? Perfect. Now we'll get this over to the table. Let me rearrange. Yeah, so getting back to the custom end of this stuff, it is trial and error. Put it together, hope it works, and go from there. So as you can see, this is where that gas leaked and the carpet is all coming apart there. So that's no good. This is where I made my initial mistake. Well, I told you how I, I made a mistake cutting that pattern out. It doesn't exist. So that's no good. So I've got brand new carpet here. Like I said, it was cheap enough, 48 bucks, so what the hell? Not uh, worth crying over spilt milk or spilt carpet. So we will pattern this right over that sucker. And I'm going to, or I'm going to put those pieces of steel over. I'm going to cut these back. These here, I'm going to make a better arch on this and make that pattern back like a half an inch. But I'm going to have steel on there and, uh, and that will make a better layout than I'm trying to do. I think that's gonna work, but I'll try it.
So that gives me a little bit of a, I had them cut a little long before. And this will give me a little better layout now that I'm going to put a, um, a uh, nice little piece of um, spit it out, Steve. What am I trying to say? A nice little piece of trim in there, trim steel or whatever I'm trying to say, you know. So I'm going to mark out where all my other pieces were. Like watching paint dry, right? I know these have to be cut to here. You have a three hole pattern right here. I mean, I have to relief. Something has to be able to, I, you know, I can't, these pedals don't remove, and this is the steering column, and that doesn't remove. So I have to put relief cuts to spread that carpet apart and get it in place, right? And then account for all your holes. There's so many perforations that come through this thing. Oh, this is the shifter. I want to make the shifter a little smaller. I'm going to close small as a note to self. This is for the emergency. Break. These are the holes for my seats. Four bolt holes to four for each seat. So that's eight bolt holes. What I did was I'll show you after is I heat up a rod. I burn those right in. Easy way. Plus, it seals the edge of your carpet so the carpet doesn't let go or fray, I should say. That's good. That's the one. That's where my that's where my uh, um what I'm trying to say where my choke went through and I couldn't you know I, I just cut a straight hole to it, but now that I've got it, it's almost like a new pattern. So now I can make it better than it was. We can make it better than it was, Captain. It's that, that. Here and here, I'm just going to make one mark. One mark. And we will make it all meet together with a nice line. It's that. Now let's account for all the lines. So we got the steering column. 
Make sure that didn't slide a little bit. Which it looks like it did slide a little bit. Right there. Right there. New line on there. So you gotta keep pay attention, guys. You never know. Things move. Now I'm gonna put a new stop line, an arrow, so I know that the new line is the line I want to be on. Sometimes you get moving and you make mistakes. And Lord knows I've made my share. So steering column, uh, clutch, brake. Those are accounted for. This is starter button. This is, I don't know what that is. Oh, gas pedal right there. Gas pedal. This is shifter, emergency brake, all marked out. That is choke. All right, I got all my seat holes marked out. And we're good. Everything's marked out and lined. You can see that from where you're standing. Not really, I'll show you. So, got all my lines on here for seats and all my pedals and all that now we're going to do some cutting so i still have to leave this pattern on here for a second while i cut these curved lines and That's that. Right. So I got a new blade on. Don't be skimpy on the blades. Make sure your cuts are good, because you'll fray like that. And don't fray. Go in with no fear, just cut. All you can do is make a mistake. That's how you learn. Alright, at this point I can get rid of this. Sayonara, baby. That's that. Now these lines all get hidden by my uh, door cards. That one's for you, Jim. Door cards. You know what I'm talking about.
There's my extra, which we will put in the back room and never, ever use ever in my life. And believe me, all my nieces and nephews, when I die and you're emptying out the house, you will find this piece of carpet in the back room. Put there for now. There's that. If you have any little frays, you know, cut them here now, but you may still see something after you install it. Just cut those frays out afterwards. And that's it. Like I say, don't be afraid. Get it? I'm cutting the shifter a little smaller. It fit before, which is nice, but it's like, you know, if you can tighten it up, why not? So there's that. Now, I'm going to show you on the... Um, On the holes, what I'm going to do a small piece here. There you go. So, get a pair of pliers ready. Maybe some glove. It's gonna get hot. Maybe just a glove, any glove will do. And the left piece, I'm grabbing a left-handed glove. We'll tighten you up down here. I'll show you a little trick. You're gonna learn something today. And if you don't want to. Got to heat it up. Pretty good. Now I'll show you an up close of that. Alright. I'm going to heat this rod back up.
Now remember, do not touch the rod to your forehead. It's hot. Don't do as I do. This is only the way I do it. And you take that, put it right in the center of that hole, and then just move it around like that. And what you've done is created a beautiful hole for your bolt to go through. You see that? Very simplistic. And, uh, and that's it. So we'll continue on. I thought this rod would transfer heat a lot further up, but it's really not. Yeah, real easy trick for you there. If you ever putting this type of carpet in, it's all plastic. Carpet is just plastic, guys. How much to it? And like I always say, fear not. Just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? You fail and you learn a bunch of stuff? That's what happens. Been there, done that. Got the metal for it. Yeah, it's a chilly day in August up here in Massachusetts. So the cool thing about burning this stuff, and I probably said it already, but I, I never remember what I say because we're not scripted here, but it's, it's, it burns that carpet edge and seals it, you know what I'm saying? So it, um, it won't fray, and that's the point. And if you have one of these, get one of these. A little clicker, and uh, you turn the gas on, and that's your spark. Best thing in the planet, right there. The old days we had these flint clickers, and they're a pain in the ass. Okay, so I think we've got everything cut. Let's uh, try to put it in. Let's see if we have great success. That will end our video for today. And uh, on the next one, because we're already at 44 minutes, I like to keep them to a half hour, but what the hell. I'm having a little fun doing carpet today, so let's go for it. I think we're all set. Yeah, it's starting to warm up a little bit. We had rain all day. I had scheduled an air conditioning guy to come look at my AC because when I came home from Old Cape Cod, our AC wasn't working too well. And uh, so they're supposed to be here at 9 o'clock this morning. And at 9.44, I finally make a phone call and go, what the hell, brother man? What's going on? And they go, oh. We didn't call you? I'm like, uh, yeah, no, you didn't call me. And they said it was too cold and rainy. And I get it. Too cold and rainy. So, we'll have to come back another day.
but I did get my AC running. And how I did that was I changed the filter on it, which was filthy. So that's number one problem. And I, uh, I power washed the condenser unit outside because those have tiny little fins on them. And we have a lot of pollen here. I've got white pines here. And man, literally in June, you can see the pollen in the air. It's like horrible. Shit, I missed the whole, damn it, all the hell, as my mother used to say. Um, I can cut that in place, I guess. So, I power washed the AC unit, and it seems to be running good for now. So, there you have it. So another thing I didn't do is I got to take these side panels off, which um, is another simple thing, but I forgot. So anyway, I power washed the panels or the uh, condensing unit itself from the inside out. You don't power wash it from the outside in. Power wash it from the inside out. And that blows out all that pollen and debris that get into your fins because the an AC unit basically is like a radiator on a car. In fact, it's exactly like a radiator on a car. And uh, it. Um, If it gets clogged up, just like a radiator on a car, it won't cool. You know, radiator is full of antifreeze, but a condensing unit for a house is full of, they used to use Freon, which Freon is now illegal because it's poisonous and it's environmental issues. So they use another type of something in the air conditioning units. I just don't know what it is. I used to because like I said, I was a builder for 40 years of my life. And um, so they use some other product now, which is safe to the environment. Of course, we have to, we have to take care of old mother nature now, which is a good thing. And that's that. So by blowing out that unit, I um, the air conditioner started working good again because now I had airflow. And if you don't have airflow, it overheats and shuts down and also it will cause in your furnace, in the top of your furnace, when you have central air, has what they call an A-coil. It's called an A-coil for a simple reason, because it looks like an A, because it's pyramid like this. And uh, it um, has all this copper in it, and all your cool refrigerant runs through that copper, and your cold, your, your warm air runs by that A coil and up into your house, and that cools your house. So if you don't have proper airflow to the A coil, the A coil will then freeze up because that coolant is ice cold, right? It's already gone outside. They've sucked the warm air out of it. It's now cooled in that condenser coming back through your house. And if you don't have the proper enough airflow, if your air blocks, say your your um, your 
air filter in your furnace is clogged, and you're not getting enough uh, airflow across that A coil, the A coil will ice up, literally freeze ice on it. And when that happens, now you've got all kinds of problems. So you again will not have air conditioning. Air conditioning which won't work. It'll it'll go into if you have a modern system, it'll go into sensory overload and basically shut itself down and go into a delay code and uh, won't fire up again. So you have to shut your system off and let it sit basically overnight, and that will melt down and then clear up all your uh, other issues that you have with your, um, whatever the problems are with uh, airflow, and go from there. So that's your air conditioning lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, I thought I had all my holes cut, but I have one that is not. So needless to say, long story short, the AC is running, but I'm still going to have them come back and do a tune-up on all that and make sure it's working good. You're doing this move, make sure you get a sharp, sharp blade because otherwise you will just be the most miserable person in your neighborhood for that moment. Perfect, as we like to say in the car business. Oh, there's that. Um, what am I missing? Get my foot pedal. Gas pedal is in. Rod, where the hell did that go? My starter push rod. Hey, sun's coming out. I'll tell you one thing I got to do when the sun comes out. I have to mow my damn lawn. It's got crab grass and real crabs in it by now. Making me crabby, I know that. So here's my push button starter. Model A4, guys, we'll know what that's for. Pretty basic. Push buttons in, put the brake pedal on. Here's the push button for this uh, gas pedal. Pretty basic, right? There's your, <laughs> there's your gas pedal, big as a 50 cent piece, I guess. And uh, that's that. That goes here. Don't cross thread it. Don't cross thread it. <laughs> Story of my life. All 
Now, as you remember, guys, stop one half turn before you strip it. And uh, so the other thing I have to do is put in my um, oops, get out now. Put in my uh, that's my choke lever right there. See it? Choke. And it's got to go through that hole, but I have to disassemble it in the carburetor and. I've already gone 56 minutes. I just don't want to go any further. And so the carpet, I'm considering a success. See, everything's in down there. Um, put all my panels back in. I can put the um, the uh, seats in. There's my nice fuel gauge. I couldn't be happier with that because it's nice to know where your fuel, be, you know, with a Model A, you have a little floaty type one, and it's kind of a pain in the butt um because it's hard to see you know so so that's it for today so thanks for coming back thanks for watching thanks for all the great comments had another guy while i was on vacation um i don't know where he's from but he had a bunch of nice stuff to say and on one of my videos actually i think it was the new rex video which gets a lot of watches and uh, nice gentleman, and he said that I have uh, subscribed to your channel. I enjoy it. So that's what keeps me motivated. I hope you're enjoying yourselves watching this. You know, I'm just a hobby guy. I was not raised making cars. I'm a woodworker. You know, I built uh, uh, houses, additions, and cabinetry for uh, 40 years. I had my own construction company for 38 years and retired now with three years this month. And I'll tell you, Time goes by faster when you're retired than when you're working because you're not focused on the time. So um, enjoy every day that you have. Stay busy. You know, get motivated. Do something outside, inside. I hope, you, uh, I hope you're keeping busy because it's good for the brains. And, uh, and that's it. So on the next video, we're going to put the seats in. We're going to... Um, Get this sucker fired up because I miss it. I haven't been in this car in a couple of months now because I've been, you know, busy with everything and then two weeks vacation and then having put the gas tank in and all that. Watch the old video, see how we put the gas tank in. And uh, hopefully this will draw fuel. If it doesn't, then I've got to put an inline um, fuel pump in. And that will just be one more thing. And, you know, when you build these cars, it's always one more thing. So thanks, everybody, for coming back. You have a great day. Say hi to your friends. You know, hug your dog, give him an extra bone for me, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.